Hey guys, what's going on? It's Colin here again. Back with another truck video, actually. I know I don't do a heck of a lot of these. Uh, I'd like to do more videos of me actually working on the truck, but most of the time I don't usually have the time to both be working on it and videoing it. Because for those of you guys who make videos, you know it takes twice as long to get a job done when you're videoing it, and I'm usually in a rush. But, anyways, <laughs> today is a uh, important milestone for the truck. And that is because it was one year ago today, June 29th, that I got this thing here. It was delivered, it was a surprise first of all, it was arriving on that date. My parents didn't tell me, they t kept telling me it was getting delayed and shipping and whatnot. And the next thing my mom said, come on out. And the truck was parked right down where that car is pretty much. Um, but yeah, that was one year ago today already. It both feels like it was forever ago and yesterday <laughs> at the same time. I don't know how that works, but it does. Time is weird. <laughs> but anyways, I figured uh, I'd do an update video on this thing. Um, I went back and watched my original video because I made a video on this around the, around the time I got it. Um, I wanted to see if I could do any updates from that video and as I was watching it I realized there was a lot of incorrect information in that. <laughs> so um, for those of you guys who remembered that video you're going to have to excuse me because I'm going to end up repeating a lot of the information just to correct it here. But in this video, I figured I'd do an overview slash update. So I guess an update for the people who have seen it and an overview for the people who haven't. But anyways, this is going to be a long video of me talking probably, so hopefully it's not too, too boring. Um, but anyways, this is a 1971 Dodge Power Wagon W200. Um, and it is my daily driver and work vehicle and uh, everything in between. <laughs> um, so, uh, I guess last year, I guess it would have been, what, it's 2021, so that's, so in 2019 I started looking for a vintage pickup truck, because uh, my grandpa has a couple of cars from the 30s, which I'm hoping to do videos on uh, this summer if possible, but I'd been working on those since I was three years old, and I've always really been into antique cars, um, and my engine collecting hobby was starting to really take off. And it was really hard getting antique engines in and out of a car like this all the time. And I knew I wanted to, when I wanted to get my own vehicle, I knew I wanted something old because I liked the antique cars and whatnot. So I figured I might as well get a vintage pickup truck. So I started looking for trucks in about November of 2019, I guess it was. Um, and I found a couple that I was really interested in and then they ended up falling through for one reason or another. There was a pandemic in the middle of all this. <laughs> Um, but finally, in around May or April of that year, I found this thing. It was on some random-ass website, too. I don't remember what it was. Um, but I was scrolling through trucks, and I would, I would just open all the ones I thought were interesting in a new tab. And I kind of saw this. I was like, oh, that looks interesting. I opened it in the new tab, and I looked at, like, a million other trucks that night. I think I looked at, like, 400 trucks or something ridiculous that night. And this was the final tab um, that I had open. And I was getting ready to go to bed, and my dad came in and said, Hey, what'd you find? And I said, I was just about to close the second to last tab. And I said, eh, not, not too much. And I closed the second to last tab, and I saw this thing again. And I kind of got interested in it. My dad was like, oh, yeah, that looks a cool one. Why don't you look into that? He went to bed. I looked into it a little more, and I instantly fell in love with it. It was just everything I was looking for, plus a couple bonuses, which I'll get to in the meantime. But it was absolutely perfect. I did not... It did not look the way you see it now when I got it. It had these big beefy tires on it that made it look very different. But it was still everything I had hoped for and then some. So, told my parents I was interested. They said, fine, I guess we could probably afford a truck now. The pandemic, things are getting a little better because it kind of impacted my dad's business a lot. So, um, you know, there was a little while where like we could have afforded the truck, but we figured it wasn't the smartest idea to buy one. But we figured, okay, things are finally getting a little bit better. Um, and we can probably afford that, which made me extremely happy. So, fast forward a couple months, because <laughs> there were a lot of issues, um, and we finally got it here. One of the issues that I, I always find hilarious is that the original title that they had for this thing from 1971 had the VIN number incorrect. They missed a digit, so it was a typo from 1971. But then there was issues with insurance, and then there was issues with wiring the money for the, for the uh, you know, to pay them, and then we had to find a transport, and it was, it was a whole disaster. It took like two months to get it here, but anyways, it finally got here, um, 
and I took it for one test drive and then I realized uh, it needed a heck of a lot of work. <laughs> so I took it off the road for a week, did a ton of work, and then I've been driving it pretty much ever since. And it's been an awesome truck, I'll tell you that much. Knock on wood, uh, it has not, it's been dead on reliable and it has not really given me too many issues. And it's just been so much fun. Uh, myself included, uh, everybody loves this thing. I love it, family loves it. Everybody I drive by loves it. I'm always getting honks and people honking at me, giving me thumbs up. I'm always giving, you know, waving people and smiling. And pretty much all the time, unless it's like really crappy weather, I have a smile on my face while driving this. The only times I don't are when it's downpouring and I can't see anything, which is a little stressful. And also when either it's like super traffic-y or just a high stress driving situation. That's pretty much the only times I don't have a smile on my face. Um, but otherwise, it's a, it's just a blast, and I love it. Um, so, I figured we'll start with the overview, and then we'll touch on the updates. So as I mentioned, there's a 1971 Dodge uh, Power Wagon, which means it's 4x4, as you can probably tell by the locking hubs. Uh, this was the last year of the swept line body style, I believe. You can kind of see that line going all the way down with the little dip in it back there. Um, so it's sort of kind of a 60s truck. These came out in, I believe, 61 maybe and they didn't change a heck of a lot across the years I know they changed the hood and the front grille and then the interior a little bit but otherwise I don't think much changed um, and this was actually an ex fire truck it came from Indiana it was a small town in Batesville Indiana and it was a they used it as a brush truck there so there's giant water tank in the back I actually have a vintage picture from like the 90s I'll put in here of it in service but they had a big water tank in the back with a bunch of like water paddles and pumps and whatnot, and they used it to put out brush fires. These big, it had these big off-roading tires on it too, and they used it that way because I've been in contact with the uh, fire chief there um, and the other guys that used it, and they used it as a fire truck from 1971 all the way to 2004. And around 2004, there's a little bit of discrepancy here. I'm not entirely sure. What I believe happened is that they then gave it to the Parks and Recreation Service out there, who used it to water all the flowers around town. Um, but it's possible that happened a few years later, and in around 2004, which is a year after I was born, actually, um, they just took all the stuff off it, used it as a regular pickup truck, then they gave it to the Parks and Rec. I'm not entirely sure. But either way, then the Parks and Rec used it to water flowers around town for a long time, which was a nice easy retirement for it. But eventually they got tired of getting in and out of tight spaces without power steering, which I don't blame them because with the old tires, which were like, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 inches wide, it was very hard to steer without power steering. Um, they sold it to the owner of a small used car dealership out there who added it to his collection for a while, I believe. And then he decided to start liquidating some of his stuff so then he sold it through the business which I got it from, which was Bessler's Trackside Auto for anybody who's interested. Um, great, great interaction there. The guy Mike that I was dealing with, the sales rep, I guess, he was he's such a great guy, he's super nice, he's willing to take care of pretty much anything for me. But then it finally came here and I've been using it as my daily driver ever since. When I got this truck, it had 16,711 original miles on it. So that was one of the added parks I mentioned at the beginning when I was looking at this thing. I thought, I thought for sure that it had been rolled over or anything, you know, the odometer had rolled over or something like that, but no, 16,711 original miles. I have since, using it for my daily driver for the last year, put about 4,000 miles on it. So we're just about to hit 21,000 miles. I think we're at like 20,890 something. So we're getting pretty close to 21,000 miles. So, I've definitely, I put, <laughs> you know, come to think of it, I put, uh, I've put almost a quarter of the miles it had on it in the last 50 years, I've put on it since, <laughs> which is kind of amusing. But, um, yeah, like I said, I've loved every minute of it, pretty much. Take a look at the interior here. If you look at these doors close enough in the right light, I don't know if it's going to show up here, but you can clearly see where it says Batesville, Indiana, Parks and Recreation. I really, I've had a really tough time getting it to come out in camera, but it's pretty clear in person. I do use this for my business, and I have my own magnetic signs, which I stick on the door there, so it's not something that most people would know about. Um, but it's definitely there. But the truck's pretty much all original. 
Uh, obviously, there's a couple spots where they painted it. They There was some letters here. You can see it says TR. Uh, they painted here. And they painted the doors because, as I mentioned, it was a fire truck. And the original, you know, originally as a fire department, they had a hand-painted logo on the door and probably a number up by the searchlight there on either side. So the, the Parks and Rec painted over it and then put their own stuff on it. Unfortunately, they didn't do the best job matching the color, as you can probably tell. But honestly, I'm not too, too concerned about it. I think it kind of adds to the character of the truck. Um, you know, same thing with these spots. I'm probably going to try and get some of these out if I can, but either way, you know, it's an, and the scratches too, and dents and stuff. It's a little bit, you know, it's got a little bit of use on it, but I kind of think it adds a, a nice, you know, old work truck patina to it. But, um... Obviously, here's the other side. Of course, when I want to film all these guys doing the landscaping over there, start up, but that's all right. But anyways, you can see it's got the searchlight on it. This one's actually a new old stock one I got shortly after I got the truck because the original one, it always had one, but the original one, the gears and the handle were kind of stripped. So I actually met somebody, a family friend who was a cop, and he had a couple of these brand new in the box. So I threw this one on there. And this one works perfectly. And it's a really nice piece to have. The other nice piece I like, truck has its original inspection sticker from 1971 on it. Which I think is kind of neat, so I definitely left that. But, take a look inside here. I added the three-point seat belts uh, because I was going to be daily driving it. It only had a uh, two lap belts on it, so I added two three-points and then a center lap just in case I want to take a third person. Um, they did bolt right in for the most part. I had to make a small bracket on that one and then I always laugh because this truck must have been built on a Friday or whoever put it together had a few too many drinks because these B, B posts up here, I think that's what they're called, you know, there's an actual structural beam in there and that has threads in it already and then the sheet metal goes over it and there was a hole. Well the two, the hole and the, the threads were not lined up at all. They were kind of like this. <laughs> so I actually had to drill out the sheet metal a little bit, which I think was funny. But here, let's take a look at the mileage. 20,992. All right, so it's a touch more than I remember. But um, yeah, this is got the, uh, the searchlight here, which you can see works. You tilt it like this, and then this handle spins, which turns it back and forth. Dashboard-wise, it's actually pretty plain and simple. It doesn't really have many numbers except for the speedometer. We've got a fuel gauge here. Uh, you know, alternator, charge, discharge, speedometer, odometer, down here is temperature, and then the oil pressure. And we have the left and right directionals, high beam light, and the brake light, which is the only, like, idiot switch on this. And you really have to be an idiot to, like, not know what that means, because the only way that I ever gotten that to go on is when I was bleeding the brakes and the pedal hits the floor. Then that light turns on. <laughs> so it's like if the pedal hits the floor you already know something's wrong before the light can even turn on but um otherwise over here we have the uh, headlights switch and if you twist it which i didn't figure this out for a long time i feel like kind of an idiot if you twist it it will turn the cab light on so that's useful uh took me way too long to figure that out <laughs> um over here we have the wiper switch the emergency flashers ignition switches down there this came with it, and it was something I would have added anyways. It's a master kill switch for all the electrical on the truck. Um, this here is a switch I'll get to in, the, in a little bit. I added that. Down here is your e-brake. This controls a vent that's up under the cowl, which is really nice. Seeing as don't have air conditioning, it pulls fresh air in down by your feet and circulates it around. Obviously, gas, brake, clutch. Under here, this mat is kind of falling apart. The bottom switch here is your low and high beam selection, and that, I'll get to in a minute, but that is the wiper fluid bulb, which is kind of interesting. We have our uh, heating controls here, which is the, the fan. This is the temperature here. Um, I ended up replacing the heater valve. That's why this is backwards. This is actually off now, rather than being on high like it says, and then this controls the flaps down below. Um, right now I have it on vent and the heat off and I have this little door open that's under here next to the heating box Which is kind of like the fresh air vent and pulls air in got the glove box there, which is full of junk And then the pretty simple and plain door panels. You just got the the window crank there and the door latch there and armrest 
you know, obviously it's manual crank up windows and the, the wing windows, which do a hell of a lot for air conditioning. <laughs> the sun visors, this one's a little sad because the actual whatever is on this shaft is pretty stuck and over the years people are probably pulling on this and it, it's a little floppy. The other one's all right, it's just stiff. I'm just not entirely sure how to actually lubricate those. Um, the cinder blocks came with it, they're foam and I love them and they're perfect for the truck so I kept it. Obviously this mirror is an original. It's kind of a piece of junk, but it works well enough. You got a little stick sticker here telling you how to uh, engage the locking hubs. And then this one too, which is a little warning. It's a four speed on the floor, as you can see. Nice big stick, it's got quite a hell of a lot of throw to it also. Nice big steering wheel, horn button, directionals obviously. You need the nice big steering wheel when you don't have power steering, you need the extra, you know, torque. <laughs> this is the uh, transfer case. And obviously we've got the nice big bench seat here, and the gas tank's behind the seat for added safety. <laughs> or as I tell the people at car shows, this truck was equipped with the ejector seat package. Um, when I got it, there was a newer, well, newer Sony radio in here, probably from like the 80s or 90s. Uh, let's just say it was breaking about a CD changer. And there were a couple bookshelf speakers down below the bench seat here, which sounded like crap. Um, they got loud, but that was about all I could say for them. And I just got sick and tired of that. And then one day I was driving home and the uh, radio decided to let the magic blue smoke out, <laughs> which was exciting. Um, so I drove around without one for a while. Whoever cut this hole out did a really crappy job too. It's all jagged. Um, and they scratched up the dash too a lot. So finally I got sick of all that and I wanted a new radio that actually worked because I'm not exactly inclined to pay over $500 for a classic looking one just to have Bluetooth. So while it is not exactly ideal with the uh, blue lights, uh, when it's off like that, I don't think it looks terrible. And if it really does, I can always pop this front face off, but it doesn't bother me. It's more of a uh, function over form thing for me. And it's really nice to finally have a radio with Bluetooth, say that much. Speaker wise, we put it exactly where the original one would have been. It's up under the dash there, um, which I might be able to show you the other way. Hang on here. Let's see. It's a little messy up here, under here, but maybe up there you could you could see the bottom end of the speaker up there, that shiny thing. But um, what we were able to find, we meaning my dad pretty much, <laughs> he's more of the audio guy than I am. He found it's a single speaker, but it's got two tweeters in it, so uh, it's actually got stereo sound, which I'll demonstrate later. And it sounds pretty damn good, all things considered. Um, it could use a little extra bass, especially with how noisy this cab is, it kind of drones out the bass. But when you're just sitting here, it sounds great. And even on the highway, it's more than good enough. If I add anything, I'll add a small subwoofer up under the dash somewhere, but honestly, it's good enough for now. But that pretty much covers the inside here. If you guys are curious, that's the manufacturing date, 0571, so it's actually got the same birth month as me. I was born in May, just like 50 years before. <laughs> Here is the uh, ID tag. If you want to see that anymore, you can pause the video. All right, had to pop the hood there. Can't really do it one-handed. <laughs> um, one quick update actually, and not that you guys would really notice, but I put halogen headlights in it because I figured out within the first time driving at night that this thing had incandescents, which were bright, about as bright as candles, and they were aimed every which way. <laughs> so I put halogens in there and aimed them correctly, and uh, halogens are more than bright enough. I could go on a quite angry rant about LED headlights, which I'll try and refrain from here, but I will just say that uh, I looked for a long time and I did not find an LED that looked like these and any ones I found and I've seen online they just look stupid on an old truck like this especially with going with the classic look with the wheels and everything they just look stupid they're not they don't have that nice lens they're very like it looks like a dark pupil but they're too bright anyways in my opinion these are more than bright enough for me but uh under the hood here it's a good old 318 V8, which I think is about 5.2 liters if I remember correctly. Um, two barrel, Carter, carburetor, big oil bath, air cleaner. This tube here is about the extent of all the emissions on the truck. <laughs> you know, all the emissions control. Um, 
And the place I got it from, they put a new distributor cap, plugs and wires in it. Um, I've done a lot of electrical work. I placed the fan belt, multiple oil changes. I mentioned all the, I, I may, have, may have mentioned the, I did the fuel lines, all the rubber ones. I blew out the uh, hard lines. I rebuilt the carburetor and I've cleaned it out like, once or twice since then. I put a new uh, heater valve in it since the original one was seized. Luckily it was seized open so I just put this one down in here because it's a hell of a lot easier to work in here than in the uh, heater box. Changed the oil a couple times. Oh, actually only twice. I just did it recently. Um, what was I going to say? I've messed with the brakes quite a bit. I ended up last September I took this truck off the road for a week and I did all the brakes. Uh, I did new shoes, I had the drums turned down, new cylinders, a couple of new lines. When I first got the truck I did these flexible lines in the front because they were shot. So I've done a lot of uh, bleeding of brakes which I do not like to do. But there's your uh, dual master cylinder there. And I mentioned that little bulb in the cab before for the wiper fluid. Well, that like canvas bag thing is where it actually goes and the way it works took me a little while to figure this out but the way it works is you put wiper fluid in there and then when you want to get wiper fluid up onto the windshield you pump that bulb with your foot and it shoots a charge of air into this bag which then forces it up through these little nozzles that are up under that grill it's absolutely hysterical unfortunately this piece of plastic here cracked and all my air pressure is leaking out of that so it hasn't worked for a little while but I'm gonna glue that back together and fix it because it's really funny to watch Put new wiper blades on it because I didn't realize how bad the old ones were until I needed to get a new one because one of them broke and then I was like, holy crap, that made a hell of a difference. <laughs> the big old uh, steering box is down there. I believe it's a Saginaw box, maybe a 525, I believe. But yeah, I think just to show how simple this truck really is, one single fan belt. That's all it needs. <laughs> and it's got all this nice space up here and down in here. So I'm not tall, I'm only like 5'9", I'm not tall enough to reach the distributor, so what I'll often do is I'll sit up here and put my legs down there, and then I can reach everything, and there's space next to me for tools, too. Here's the original uh, tool stowage, as it says there. There you go, the original screw jack and tire iron. I carry a four-way iron on me, because I don't want to deal with that stupid little thing. Um... That's your throttle and everything there. It's an automatic choke, and it's been really good for most of the year. But towards the end of the winter, it started acting up. So I'm not. I'm I'm going away to college next year, so I won't be here very often to drive it. But if it gets to be a hassle, I'll probably end up just putting a manual choke in it rather than fixing the automatic one because I like having full control over stuff like that. I I just I don't know. That's just the way I am. I like that. But uh, mechanical fuel pump down there. Still works fine. And yeah, I did the valve cover gaskets too, I believe, at one point. Because they were uh, leaking all over the exhaust. And anytime I came to a stop somewhere, it looked like the truck was on fire. <laughs> so that wasn't great. But uh, this noise here about sums up this truck too. Here, I'll try and catch this. <laughs> that sums this truck up pretty well. Big, clunky, and overbuilt. Um, I mentioned that this was a fire truck. I didn't mention that uh, I got the size of the tank of water it carried. Keep in mind this is a three-quarter ton truck. Well, the amount of water alone that the tank could carry was one ton of water by itself. Not to mention all the other equipment in there. So this thing was well overweight for 40 years, 40 to 50 years. But I'm sure if anything it said I could take more. Because <laughs> this is one hell of a tough truck. That was uh, Dodge's slogan back then, was Dodge builds tough trucks. Try that again. <laughs> Dodge builds tough trucks. And I will say, uh, this thing definitely lives up to it. Because they did do a few things to it, but drive, you know, drive line wise, it's pretty much stock. The only thing that they may have done, and I'm not even positive on this, there's been some debate, is they may have added a couple extra leaves in the back. But otherwise, it's all stock. One thing that isn't stock, however, it's comically not stock, is that oil pan. I don't know if you can see how massive that oil pan is, but according to the manual, I have the original manual for this in the glove box, uh, this engine should hold four quarts of oil, five if you're doing a filter. Well, I did, I did an oil change on it for the first time when I got it, and I put five quarts of oil in and it was still way low. 
turns out that this thing actually holds uh, seven or eight quarts, which is just about two gallons of engine oil. <laughs> so uh, that was pretty comical. Um, and I will say, because I changed the fluids and everything else, between the two differentials, the transfer case and transmission, that's another three gallons of gear oil. <laughs> so it's definitely well lubricated, I'll say that much. But I will say that with that oil pan, this engine runs nice and cool. I don't know if you saw the gauge, it kind of has like a cold, a hot, and then like an operating range. That temperature bar always sits on the very bottom of that operating range. So this thing never really gets hot. Bed-wise, they had this liner in here when I got it. Uh, I wanted to rip it out, and then I realized how much of a pain in the ass it would be to rip this out because it was like a, a spray-in liner. Um, and while I'm not thrilled about it, it's been it's been all right. I just I get concerned about water getting under it and rotting the, the bed out. But I sealed up everywhere I could with Flex Seal a year ago, and it got a little torn up. So I'm guessing I'm gonna have to do that once again. But um, yeah, I, it's not my favorite, but it's not worth the effort for me to rip it out. But while we're back here, that's where I keep my spare for now. I really want to put it up under the truck. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, they put the tow hitch on it too, by the way. Uh, and this bumper isn't stock either. Um, but up front there was probably one of the best things I ever did. I put a winch in the bed, and that has been beyond useful in towing uh, big heavy engines up like the Witty, and also all sorts of customers, garden tractors and machines up into this thing. That is thing has been so useful. And the other thing I did, which you probably can't really see until we go like this, is I put bed lights in it, which also makes a huge difference when you're loading stuff at night because there's no light on the back, you know, like the top of the cab like modern trucks have. So that's very nice. And that's what that little toggle switch does in the cab there. Um, I was lucky with the winch that there is actually heavy gauge wiring in the truck from something or another coming all the way, pretty much all the way back. So I was, I didn't have to run a ton of wire. Pretty much just the wire that the winch came with was good enough. And I put a couple of these like eye hooks in for strapping stuff down. Um, but yeah, you can see the holes. Well, where those eye hooks are, there's they were holes, and that's where the original water tank mounted. And I was told they had an old, I think it was, they called it like a Tommy tailgate lift thing on it, um, too. So the tailgate wasn't on it for most of the time, and they put it back on. They just kind of jammed the screws in, so it's never shut quite right because the screws are loose or missing. So at some point this summer, I'm definitely going to get new screws and put it on properly so it shuts nicely. Um, this here is a backup camera I added. I mentioned that in the first video, a lot of people got angry at me. The only reason I did that was so that I could see below the tailgate when I was about to back up. Um, and I didn't end up using it that much anyways, so it's all still there, but I don't even have the screen in the cab anymore because what would happen was the truck idle was too low to make enough juice to power the thing. So when I was backing up and I wanted to go slow, it wouldn't even turn on. So that wasn't very useful. But um, this rear bumper is not stock. It's gotta be eighth to quarter inch steel. <laughs> it's comically uh, heavy. And they welded on all these things too. I'm not entirely sure what they're for. Maybe some sort of hinge for a ramp or something. I'm not entirely sure. But that's the back end of the truck. I put these rims on, it had big beefy off-roading rims that were probably 10 to 12 inches wide, and it gave it a really beefy look, but those tires went bad, and they were 16.5 inch rims, and it would have been like $350 a tire, so I bought all new rims and new tires for it, and it's been just fine. Uh, these are actually modern Ford van rims, which I took and I, I painted them white, and I got new tires put on, and they are almost identical to the originals. And not many people run the classic stock steel rims like this, but I, everybody I've talked to really loves them, myself included. And I'm very happy with the way that they came out. But I kind of wish they were a little more common. But um, I should mention this truck has virtually no rust or rot. There is a tiny bit, like right under here on either side. It's worse on the other side. Everything is perfect except for right here. You can see, I have a little bit of a Fred Flintstone car going on here. I can see the floor. This one cab mount here, uh, and this little bit of flooring here is completely rotted out. 
but it's not for the reason that most people expect. And I will be replacing this later on in this summer. I'll get to that a little later in the video when I talk about what I'm going to do. The reason that is rotted out is because this door seal when I got it was pretty much non-existent. Uh, it was hanging off about that far over here and it was just not, it wasn't waterproof anymore. So over the last God knows how many years of water just dripping there, every time it rained it rotted that out. Not from being driven because the other side is perfect. So that's a nice sound too. So otherwise this truck is pretty much rust free. Um, there's a little bit of crustiness up on the back, on the bottom of the bed, but I'm not super concerned about that yet. Um, but they did undercoat it when it was a fire truck. I'm assuming that was done pretty early on. And it's, it's pretty much, in a lot of places it's worn off, but there's still a decent amount of it left. You can see up under here. And otherwise it's all just surface rust underneath. Um, but it looks like my camera is about to die here, so I'm going to have to plug this thing in and let it charge for a little while, then I'll crawl underneath and give you guys a tour under there. Alright, got the camera charged up a bit here, so uh, I'm going to see if I can scoot my way into the truck here. Pardon the shaky camera work, but I screwed up my back a little bit the other day, so i got to be a little careful doing this. But there's the big old muffler there. <coughs> I actually replaced this a week or two because the old one, the, the back end was completely blown out and everything. And uh, it just needed to be replaced. In fact, one of these winter days when it was cold and there was a lot of like that condensation boiling off, you could see like all the all those smoke. Um, I think there was more of that coming down out of the muffler and out the back than actually out the little tailpipe there. <laughs> so it was definitely time to be replaced. Um, I did give it a good final send off though. I was going down a hill and I made it backfire with the key and I completely blew all the guts out of the muffler and it was hysterical. The truck was nice and throaty after that. But um, yeah, I got that put in. It's a touch quieter than I was hoping for. I was hoping to get a little more of that uh, low end like V8 rumble, but I think once I quiet down the inside a bit, it will uh, sound much better. I'll be able to hear it more because it does sound pretty good, especially at, like a slightly high idle, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. But, yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I did fire it up straight piped, because <laughs> I had to. Um, so I can put a quick clip of that in here. For everybody who wanted me to straight pipe it, there you go. It's been straight piped. That is <laughs> ridiculously loud. <laughs> That's hilarious. Sounds pretty cool though, I'll just say that much. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. There is the uh, giant pumpkin that is our rear end. This truck has 354s front and back, which is both pretty rare for this uh, W200 truck, a big heavy duty truck like this. Most of them had 410s or 488s. Um, but it's also very nice because it means on the highway it cruises decently. New flexible line up there, well, relatively new. Giant pack of leaves, leaf springs there. Here's drive shaft number one, this truck actually has three. And this is our emergency brake cable, it's mechanical brakes. There's the uh, big old transfer case there, with the little gearbox for the speedometer cable. These are the uh, the wires for the winch, go down and around and then up over here. It's another one of those big clunky switches in the floor there, just in case something happens I can shut the winch off. There's the uh, back of the transmission, drive shaft number two, it's a little short one. And then drive shaft number three with the uh, front differential. And you can see it's all enclosed, uh, you know, joints there. Here's the, uh, the transmission, a little piece of paper towel that must have gotten sucked in there. <laughs> the starter motor, and this big, uh, like, cover I'm assuming the flywheel comes down pretty close under there and there's the uh, back of that ridiculously large oil pan and there's the uh, the steering box and stuff I actually got to get under here and grease all the u-joints and the, the little thing up there and some of the other spots at some point soon I didn't get to it when I did my oil change like I wanted to but uh, there you go that's the underside of the truck as you can see 
Like I said, there's just surface rust on anything. I, I mean everything. But no real rot, really, except for uh, up front here. As you can see. But otherwise it's pretty good, and there's still a lot of this undercoating on here. So, that's cool. But, uh... This truck won't really get used in the winter anymore. Besides, I used it last winter. I tried to keep it off the roads when possible. Had to use it a little bit. I washed the crap out of it whenever I could. But the next four years, I'll be up at college, so it won't be used that that much, which will be nice. Keep it preserved. Although everything's so oily and greasy. <laughs> I don't really have to worry about it too, too much. But, uh... There you go. Yeah, there's the underside. And there's, there's the other little bit of rot over there. Not too terribly concerned with it. But now I gotta go out from under this thing without hurting my back anymore. Ugh, there we go. That wasn't too bad. But uh, yeah, it's been a good truck. I don't know if I mentioned this before because I've it's actually been like all day since the last clip. But um, upcoming projects with the truck. I'm gonna rebuild the steering box and these new seals. Uh, it's been puking a lot of grease out by the pitman arm for a while, and I just haven't gotten around to it, so I'm going to do that. And then, after I teach my dad how to drive stick in this thing, I'm going to replace the floor pan, or at least this section of it. And I want to do the clutch, too, because the clutch is burnt from 50 years of being overweighted and having God knows how many different guys drive it in the fire department. And I'm sure not all of them knew how to drive stick, either, so it's, it's definitely burnt. And it's got a lot of shakes and shudders when you first take off, which there's nothing I can do about, and it's getting on my nerves. And then I think I'm also going to put down a lot of sound dampening insulation and a new mat. Um, that'll make it a whole different truck after that. It'll actually be somewhat quiet in here, which would be nice. And then at some point, a little later down the line, mainly because I really don't feel like doing it right now, i got to do these window seals because these are also really shot. See there? They don't leak, which is why I'm not worried about it yet, but... Um, at least don't leak into the cab. All the water probably runs down through the door, so... I'll get to those at some point. You can see this one's actually like popping out of place there. I apparently have to clean my windshield, too. <laughs> it's kind of dirty. But, uh... Anyways, without further ado, I think I'm going to go grab a chalk to put onto this, because the emergency brake doesn't really do crap. Um, and I'll take it out of gear, and we'll fire it up so I can show you guys how it sounds. Alright, well, we've used uh, Nature's Chalk Blocks to chalk up the wheels here. So, let's go ahead and hop in and fire it up. Chalk blocks seem to be working. <laughs> Give that one pump. Not that it probably needs it, and here we go. Oh, maybe not. Gotta remember to hit that switch. So this is set on that little bit of like a high idle. When you push the, the pedal down once, it pumps the little gas into the cylinders and it sets the automatic choke and it gives it, you know, a high idle. So I usually let it warm up, get some oil pressure, and then you can disengage it. And that's an idle there. Let's see if I can pop the hood for you quick. Okay, I could do it one-handed. That's good. You can't always, sometimes it gets stuck. But it's got a, I don't have a tack, so I can't tell you exactly how slow it's going, but it's not that high of an idle, because you can see those fan blades whipping around. Not a whole heck of a lot to see up here, though. Can rev it up a tiny bit. Give you a shot of the exhaust note. It sounds pretty good actually. It's just a little quiet. But I like that rumble. In fact, if you rev it up just the tiniest bit, it sounds really good. You have to pardon the shaky camera work here. Like, that sounds really nice to me.
If you go much faster than this, then that stupid fan up front makes too much noise and you can't hear anything. See what I mean? <laughs> but there you go. Running nice and smooth. I'm pretty happy with that. Did a little carburetor work to it somewhat recently, so pretty happy. But I will say, although it's only a 318, it's technically one of the smaller engines for this truck. My God, that thing has a lot of power and a lot of torque too. My my God, it's crazy, especially in the lower gears. Hell, if I hit the gas too hard and when I'm starting off, I can, well, A, throw you into the seat and B, spin the tires at the same time sometimes too. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, it's definitely got a hell of a lot of torque and a lot of power, but um, yeah, it's a ton of fun to drive. But getting up onto the highway is no problem either. I mean, you have your foot pretty close to the floor, but it does it pretty good. It, it gets up and goes. You know, fourth gear only really gets into its element at like 45 miles an hour. I'll cruise around town in fourth gear at like 30 and I'll barely be touching the gas just to save a little bit of gas. But fourth gear doesn't really get into its element till the higher speeds. But hell, you know, second gear, you can spin tires out. <laughs> and first gear, you can pull a building down, especially... You put this... Let's put it this way. I had this in four-wheel low going to school one day. I had to shift into fourth gear to do 20 miles an hour. <laughs> That's how geared down it is. It's crazy. Um, you know, normally fourth gear will do, you know, 60 and above. Not that I go much faster than 60 usually. I think that the fastest I've gone in this truck was about 75 when I was passing some idiot and I had to get into the, the busy fast lane because there was an idiot on the highway doing like 30 miles an hour that I needed to get past because they were driving me crazy. So I did like 75, maybe possibly 80. And it, <laughs> it felt like it too. I don't know if some of you guys may have seen the videos where I've included some driving footage, but my God, you feel like you're going twice or three times as fast as you are in this truck. It's ridiculous. You know, 40 miles an hour feels like 80, 60 feels like 157, and, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. But with the 354s in it, even at 60 miles an hour, I don't think, the, the engine's revved up a little bit, but it's nowhere near screaming. It's got a lot of life left in it, I'll say that much. Not that I go much faster than that, because stopping becomes an issue, but this engine does pretty well, especially with this gearing. But you could put this in, in low gear, and, you know, go make a glass of coffee and it wouldn't even be very far up the street. Let alone with four-wheel low. Sometimes what I do, like, I'll, I'll come up to a stop sign and there'll be, like, five people in front of me. I'll stop, let one person go. I'll put it in first gear and not touch the gas. And the truck just kind of goes... Arr, arr, arr. And all four people in front of me will have time to stop, look both ways and go before I'm even close to the stop sign. <laughs> but some of you guys have commented on this steep, steep driveway. I don't know if this really does it justice. I'll throw in another picture that shows really how steep it gets down there. Well, this truck will pull up this driveway at an idle. I don't have to touch the gas and the truck just works its way up the driveway. It doesn't stall. It's crazy. And it's got to have a hell of a flywheel too. Because I've trucked, you can pretty much, you can fake stops in second gear at stop signs. You don't have to touch the clutch of the gas or the brake or anything. That's a lie. You have to touch the brake, but you don't have to touch the gas or the clutch, and you can pretty much fake a stop in second gear, and it just kicks right off and keeps going. I'm not advising that you do that, because it's probably a little tough on the clutch and whatnot, but it's definitely got a lot of torque and a lot of flywheel behind it, and it's got a decent amount of horsepower, too, if I had to guess. This is a big, heavy truck, and it does just fine getting up on the highway. But anyways, this is probably getting to be kind of long now. I just figured I'd do a little video on it for either those of you who haven't seen the truck yet or for those of you who've seen the last video and been wondering how it's doing. It's been absolutely great. I've been loving it, every bit of it. Even the annoying jobs are still kind of fun. Um, but yeah, I've been keeping busy with it. It's been getting me from point A to point B without complaining. And it's been a good truck. And I'm actually pretty excited to get the clutch and floor pan done because I've never done a job like either of those before. And while I'm sure it might be a bit of a bitch of a job, I think once it's done, it will be a whole new truck, and it will be much nicer to drive. But 
Anyways, guys, uh, if I really, if, I'll have to see if I can dig up any driving footage of me in this thing. But uh, if not, uh, I guess that's going to kind of wrap it up for this one. I'll see if I can get somebody to take a ride with me at some point, just for the video's sake. Um, but I might be able to throw some in here. But if not, thank you guys all for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you like what you see, hit the little like and subscribe buttons. We've recently surpassed 400 subscribers, which is awesome. Let's keep it climbing. Not that I really do this for the numbers, but the more of you guys that are subscribed, the more of you guys that I get to talk to in the comments, which is always nice. And the better the video does and whatnot, because YouTube's algorithms are weird. It favors larger channels, I think. But, as always, leave a comment if you have one, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Alright, so I actually have to run to the hardware for something quickly here, so I figured I threw together a quick camera mount with like an old GPS suction cup and uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> There's a very high chance of it moving or just not working, but we'll see. Also, it's way too hot today to not open the windows, so you'll probably get quite a bit of uh, wind noise, but We'll see what happens, it's a bit of an experiment. So uh, anyways, here we go. I was just put it in first gear to go down the driveway here. Gives me a little extra braking. Nobody's coming, nobody's coming. That was second and first gear, we've gotten to second. First gear maxes out at about 10 miles an hour. You're like screaming it. I'm sure if the video doesn't get all messed up, I'm sure the audio will too. Because <clears throat> it's both a uh, very rough and vibration filled ride and a loud ride too. <laughs> When driving something like this, one must use what I call accident avoidance technology. <laughs> it's called taking every precaution possible and expecting everybody else to hit you or jam on the brakes. You have to pull these seatbelts really, really slowly. Otherwise they lock, which is probably a good thing, but still. Nice thing with the dirt parking lot is it's like uh, power steering.
still in third gear. That was about 10 miles an hour there and we're pulling a hill. And yes, the uh, roads around here aren't exactly the greatest anymore. But I accelerated up that hill from like 5 to 10 miles an hour in third gear and I barely have to touch the gas. ever so slightly above idle. It's just chugging right along. I don't know if you can hear the exhaust or not. Just chug, 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 chug. Pulls right up the driveway just fine. Like I said, this thing's a bit of a torque monster. <laughs> but there you go, hopefully this footage works out and I'll be able to throw this in the video there. And if it does, I'm definitely using this little camera mount again because it works pretty darn good as long as the footage comes out all right. But uh, there we go, a little ride in the Dodge.